One of the great factors in your life uh, is attitude. Attitude can lift you up or can devastate you. And you see it in all walks of life. You know, we know that. Uh, if you've had a business, any salesman here? One of the things that they do for salesmen is they bring in motivational speakers because they know they want you to get sales and keep customers, and so they keep you motivated. It's easy to lose motivation, and so part of what they do is keep this motivation up, keep your attitudes up, is what they try to do. Uh, home teams often win. <laughs> I think on a neutral course, or a neutral field, we would blow the Wolverines out. <laughs> However, yesterday, we were playing on their home turf, and we made a couple blunders, and but it's true in sports. Winning and losing oftentimes is based on attitude. If you expect to lose, what's going to happen? They talk about baseball players getting in a hitting slump. I'm in a slump. Keep talking about it. You're going to stay there. You got to hit your way out. You got to shoot your way out. Winning and losing so much is determined by the attitudes that you have. And the winning edge between good teams and average teams is the attitude they've got. Personally, uh, your health and relationships have very much to do with your attitude. If you have a good attitude toward people or a bad attitude people. And so we started talking last week about attitude of gratitude. And the one thing we need, which is why I started today, is, is Thanksgiving. People who are not thankful are chronic complainers. And so I, I, Jesus talked about this. The Bible talks about this in several places. But I want to turn this morning to a story that is given in the Gospel of Luke. Probably you've heard it. Uh, it's a familiar story uh, about, uh, well, I'll just begin here. Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse or 17, verse 11. Luke 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. So he's, he's coming down towards Jerusalem. And as he entered a, a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. And they stood afar off. Now, when you were a leper, you had to ring a bell to warn people so they could go unclean, they had to declare unclean, unclean. And, uh, and they lifted their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us. So... I want to say three things this morning. The first one is that we need to see our problems correctly. We need to get a good perspective on things. If you see yourself, if these guys had seen themselves as nothing but hopeless situations, that there was no hope for them because leprosy, there was no cure for leprosy. There was no cure for leprosy. And so for them to come and say, have mercy on us, they believed that the Lord could do something. Do you believe that? One of the things that will keep you from, from thanking the Lord ahead of time for what he's going to do is this chronic complaining. The, 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 the soup's too cold. I'm sorry, this soup's too cold. I'm sorry, this, cough's, this, this coffee's too hot. I'm sorry, the weather's too hot or too cold, depending on. But we, 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 we get into this thing, and then it makes our life miserable. We amplify the problems. And we cause strife among people, discord among the brethren, and we open the door to the enemy to work in our life because we are not thankful people. Listen, everybody's got problems here. Everybody has problems. So it's not whether you have problems or whether you don't have problems. It's how you see and respond to the problems that you have. And so these guys have had they stayed in their situation. If you stay in the same situation, say, well, there's just no hope for me. Well, you're going to stay there. But if you say, I don't know how, but I know God. That's what Mary said when, when Gabriel said, you're going to have a baby. And she said, I don't know how, but I know God. And, and, and he said, with God, all things are possible. Luke 1, 137. With God, all things are possible. If you're, if you're sitting here today and you feel like you're in a hopeless situation, there's no way out. I want you to know that there's a way out. It's a person. His name is Jesus. And you need to see Jesus and not just your problem. If you see your problem, it'll be just like this, and, you, and you'll get frustrated, and, and uh, you, you just need to break away from your problem and see 
above your problem. Rise above the problem. Several years ago, we were in Knott's Berry Farm. Anybody been in Knott's Berry Farm? <laughs> Have you gone on that parachute ride? Yeah. Like, we were over there. It, was, it must have been the holiday season because it was crowded like crazy. And, and I'd never been on the ride before. And uh, I don't think I've been on it since. But uh, <laughs> we went on the parachute ride. And all of a sudden, you are taken from ground level with people all around you. And you're taken up on a parachute. And you can see the whole panoramic view and you begin to rise above the crowd rise above the problems and you can say you know what I can see a long way then we came back down we're back into it but you need to rise above your problem and let the let the Lord show you that there is hope and there is help for you in him and that's what these these lepers they didn't know how but they knew who could make a difference in their life we don't always know how the Lord's going to do it. But the interesting thing about this is that in the, in the Bible, leprosy is incurable, but there's a passage when you're cured, what to do about that. And we'll get to that here in just a second. Because the second thing is that we need to, to move in faith. Notice verse 14. And, and when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was. As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Stuff happens to you as you are living life and just going about, going about your business, but you, you obey the Lord in things that he tells you, you do that. It was, the Lord says, go show yourself to the priest. If you read the, the book of Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, it tells you exactly what to do, how to apply. You apply blood, you apply oil, and you, you hit the leper with the, uh, you, you, you get his, his uh, right thumb, right big toe, all over his head, and, and uh, says, once you're cured, the Lord will touch every part of your life and declare you whole, healthy. And I just want to say to you today, if you feel unclean, you wouldn't say that out loud, but you ring the bell, you stay away from people, and you, you think your problem or you've got problems, you need, to, you need to let the Lord touch you today at an emotional level and realize you can be healthy, you can be whole, you can be clean by the blood of Jesus Christ who cleanses us from all sin. So we need to begin to, to move in faith and see ourselves different. Move. Faith is action. It's a verb. It's doing something. Uh, you, you, when Jesus said that, he was calling them to action. The Lord calls us to do something. And that starts with a vision of not where I am, but where I'm supposed to be. The Lord gives vision to everybody here. He gives, he, the language of the Spirit are dreams and visions. You know that, right? Last Sunday, I, I, I got an article that, uh, from two, diff two different sources that in Gaza, there, there's an underground church that's going on in Gaza as, as we speak. Last Sunday, this article came out from a guy who was involved in the underground church in Gaza. And he said, some, these guys are, these, these Palestinians, you understand the difference between Palestinians and Hamas. Palestinians are the people. Hamas is the violent government that is just horrible. What, it, what they did was horrible. No excuses, no justification. But these Palestinians were wondering about uh, we're in this situation, what can we do? And this pastor said to them, Jesus can help you. Well, they know nothing about Jesus. I mean, they've been indoctrinated in all kinds of stuff. Last Sunday, 200 Muslim men had the same dream. Jesus came to them. And I've got this from two separate, so if you want to see me afterwards, I can cite my source for you. But what I'm telling you is, God can do what no man can do. And he speaks to all men. He loves everybody. And so if you see yourself stuck, you need to begin to move in faith and let the Lord supernaturally move as you naturally walk. They're called kairos moments. When God enters your life and someone else comes into your life and he has something ordained for you at that time, at that place, that he wants to do something in you and through you to somebody else. And so he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And so off they went, off they went. When you find the Bible, 
the, the Bible characters, what you'll find is that God often called them to move. Abraham, move from Ur. Move up to a place where I'm going to show you. Talk about David, who ran for 10 years. Move, move, move. I'm going to put you in a, in a, in a different place. Moses moved into the desert for 40 years, then moved into the, to the promised land. Didn't get in, but moved to the promised land uh, after 80 years. Wandering around, he, he called the people, and then after 120, the Lord, little, Lord buried him. But the Lord moves in people's lives, and people who get vision and dreams from God, if you feel like you're stuck today, say, Lord, speak to me. He is right now, by the way. But in addition to this, guy's up front. Lord, give me a dream or give me a vision. And many of you have had visions of what you're supposed to do, but you don't do it because you don't move. And the reason why you don't move is you're afraid. And when he, they said, go show yourself to the priest, they're still looking. There ain't nothing changed here. Why would I go show myself to the priest? You only show yourself to the priest when you're healed. But they're not healed. But as they went, as they're going, as you begin to live life, the Lord begins to work in your life and do something in you that you can't do in yourself. He begins to bring healing to you. He begins to help to you. Lord, I just want a man. Keep on moving. <laughs> Lord, I just want a new job. Lord, keep on moving. The Lord will do for you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that's at work in you. What's at work in you? The Spirit of God. So listen to that still small voice when he tells you to go, to do, and you say, well, just as a, just a an everyday deal. Saul was called into kingship when he was looking for his donkey. What are you doing, Saul? I'm looking for my donkey. Is as he was looking for his donkey, God had a plan for his life. Now, he'd end up going sideways a little bit. But as you're, as you're going about your business, as you're doing construction, as you're selling groceries, as you're teaching school, whatever you're doing... Be aware that God knows where you are and he wants you to begin to move and animate your life by the Spirit of God so you do what he says to do. And so what did these people do? They went. And as they went, <coughs> the Bible says here, let me go back up a little bit because it says uh, these men are, are standing off. How do you think people treated them? They treat them like lepers, right? How do you think they felt? Outcast. This chapter starts. I want to back up a little bit to what, the way this chapter starts. Jesus said to the disciples, it's impossible that no offenses should come, should come, but woe to the him through whom they come. It'd be better for a millstone would be hung, thrown, hung around his neck and thrown in the sea than to offend one of his little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If anyone sins against you uh, seven times in a day and seven times returns and says, I repent, you shall forgive him. Now he's talking about what impedes vision and what impedes the will of God in your life is other people. Everybody has problems. Here's why. We live in an imperfect world, and we're around imperfect people. There's nobody perfect here in this room. My wife's close. <laughs> but there's no perfect people. And because there's no perfect people, we have problems. And now we come to the holidays, and maybe you're thinking, you know, Thanksgiving, that is just rough. And now Christmas, that is just rough. And you know why? You don't say it out loud, but it's because of someone who is there that said something or did something that hurt you deeply some time ago, so you don't even want to go back, and sometimes you avoid going back because of that. Here's what Jesus said. It's impossible that offenses won't come. If you live life, somebody's going to say or do something that's, if you let it, it's going to hurt you. What I'm saying is don't let it. Don't let it. Offenses are going to come, don't let offenses stick because what happens is it stops the flow of God's blessing. It becomes an obstacle in your life so you can't move on and move forward in faith because you're thinking of what he did or what she did or what my boss did or what my partner did. 
instead of letting it go. So to free yourself up to be thankful. And sometimes we're not thankful because we're hurtful. So let the hurt go and let the thanks flow. Learn to forgive. And so here's what the disciple said. It comes back seven times. The disciple said, oh, Lord, increase our faith. We, for, for us to forgive somebody seven times in the same day, are you kidding me? Increase our faith. And then he tells a little story in here. I'll get back to the, where we are. But he tells a little story here uh, about a servant. He says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard, you don't need more faith. You just need what you've got. If you have faith as a grain of mustard, say this mulberry tree uh, be dried up by the roots and it, it would obey you. And then it goes, he said, and which of you having a servant? Wouldn't expect to come home. Wouldn't you expect the servant after he's taken care of uh, all the details of your life, all of his responsibilities, come back and say, make food for me. I'm ready to eat. Wouldn't you? Because he's doing his duties. He's doing his routine. And then afterwards, you let him sit down and have his drink. What the Lord's saying is we have responsibilities and we have duties and we have chore, chores. Be thankful in the midst of that. Don't expect something more than that, but expect in the middle of that that God's going to bring someone or something your way if you learn to live free, fully free, fully forgiven, and you let people go. There are people who are hurt here today that are not living in freedom and not living in vision, not living in dreams because there is a hurt in your life that you can't let go. And what I'm telling you right now is Thanksgiving is motivated by love and it's motivated by faith. It's as they went. Motivated by faith. As you go, as you forgive, as you love, as you choose to do the right thing because it is the right thing, good things begin to happen in your life and begin to flow to and, and, and through your life. So what happens then? Now one of them when he saw that he was healed. One of them. How many were there? Ten. Ten. One of them, when he saw he was healed, returned and with a loud voice, glorify God. He fell down at, at Jesus' feet, gave him thanks, and he was a Samaritan, the one you would least likely uh, think would do that. But he falls down at Jesus' feet and says, thank you, thank you, Thank you. We need to be taught to say thank you, to let this attitude of gratitude grow in us. We know what we're supposed to do. It's learned. Parents are supposed to teach their kids. You know, at, uh, we had a birthday party recently, and, and, and one of the grandkids, the parents said, what do, you, what do you say? What do you say to Grandma? Because she bought the gift. What do you say to Grandma? What do you say? What do you say to the Lord? When you get up in the morning, what do you say to the Lord? We need to learn to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Cultivate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not a day. It's a lifestyle. And when you get in that lifestyle, it'll change how you do business. It'll change your marriage. It'll change athletics in your life. You become better at everything because you expect better things and better things flow because you are free. We clog our soul up with so much debris and, and, and pain and hurt. Let it go. Uh, Luke chapter 6. Forgive, aphiomi is the, is the Greek word, and you will be loosed. Apoluo, two different words. Forgiven, you'll be forgiven is the way it is in English, but that's not what it is in the Greek, and it's not what it means. It means if you forgive, if you let something go, you're going to be free. So right now, Everybody just put your hands in front of you right now. Think of a person, a situation, or something was said. Put it in your hand and let it go right now. Let it go. Say, Lord, I give this to you. I give this to you. Lord, I want to be free. I want to be free. We teach our kids to do that. We need to learn to do that. When I was a, 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 with the missionary a couple of years ago, um, and he's in a country that I can't say because, uh, uh, 
you know, we, we pray for different people, but we don't even give their last names because if you're, if you're a missionary in some countries, they'll kill you if they find out. So uh, pray for him. But I said to him, are you, how are you doing? He said, I love it. And I'm, here's how I saw it. I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. He's lost all the creature comforts. You know, he doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi. You know, he doesn't have the stuff that we, th- what we think would be great to have. And he's got kids. I said, how are your kids doing? He said, they're doing, they're doing great. How do they like it there? They love it. Because we see things so small, and he sees a larger purpose. When you begin to see a larger purpose in your life, the little things in life just don't bother you. And so you cultivate this attitude of gratitude for the big things. Thank you, God, for, you know, $1,000. Thank you, Lord, that I get to give money. I am so thankful because my Christmas decorations are up. (laughs) Anybody have their Christmas decorations up? Raise your hand. I want you to be bold. Anybody have their tree up? Anybody have outside lights up? Anybody's getting motivated to do it right now? <laughs> we, we, uh, we had the family come down for Thanksgiving, and uh, uh, we got our Christmas tree up this last week. <laughs> and then when the grandkids came over, I had them put up. Actually, I had their dad put up the lights above the roof. And, and so we got lights outside. We got lights inside. I'm still thankful. I don't put them outside till Thanksgiving Day. Inside, we can start decorating. But I don't want people to say, what the heck are they doing? I am thankful. This is a thankful season. So all the way through the season, I'm going to be thankful. But uh, I want my neighbors, and I don't know where they are, spiritually speaking. Uh, I don't think they're as far as I'd like to see him. But I want them to see, why does he put all these lights up and lights on the bushes? And Because, thank God, I'm different. I'm a believer, and I know where I'm going. I'm not just going here in Palm Springs or to D- 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 Chapel. I'm going to be with the Lord someday. And that's a, that's a great place to be, and that's a larger purpose uh, but the small purposes he has, he has a purpose for us now and a great purpose in, in the long run. But we've got to cultivate this attitude of gratitude. Are you grateful today? Yes. Grateful for salvation? Yes. If you're here and you don't even know what I'm talking about or you're watching and don't even know what I'm talking about, uh, I want to pray for you that you would come to know uh, the Lord who does great things. Uh, The Bible tells us that we are to expect great things from the Lord. You may not get what you want, but you will get what you expect. According, this is the faith principle, Matthew 9, 29. According to your faith, let it be done to you. What would you like the Lord to do this, this, this year, this season of time in you, in your family? What would you like to see him do? Begin to expect it right now. Say, Lord, and, and then begin to declare it ahead of time. Thank, I thank you, Lord, that uh, this guy at work, let's say that because that's always a safe place. Bill at work, Lord, you're going to change his attitude over this season. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Things are going to change, and he may respond different but it's because you're responding different to him. Does that make sense? You, you, you respond different. You know, I decided to uh, buy you a dozen donuts. What for? I like it, right? But I decided to buy you a Christmas present, and this person is very unkind to you. Do not treat unkindness with unkindness. Treat unkindness with love. Be kind, tenderhearted, Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Let's remember what the Lord's doing in us and wants to do through us and reach out and touch other people. This is the greatest time of the year and the loneliest time of the year. You know that, right? There are people, you know, we invited people at Thanksgiving over that we thought may not have a place to go. Uh, Tim, you're welcome. (laughs) 
like that, just, just like that, we invited a teacher over. Uh, I'm not, I hope you know I'm not doing this. I'm not to toot my horn. What I'm trying to do is model for you what I'm talking about is that you reach out to people that you think be sitting at home doing nothing but saying the soup is too cold and the coffee is too hot. Life is good. God is good. And he wants to transform the way you think and the way you respond in life. So as you begin to see things correctly, as you begin to move in faith, just live in life. God's going to bring things your way. Then you cultivate this attitude of gratitude. When you wake up tomorrow morning, I want you to say, Lord, I'm just so grateful for today. I'm alive. I want to thank you, Lord, that you got a plan for me. And I, I play, pray this in the shower. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray in the shower, by the way. That's the way I start my day. I pray in the shower. Lord, and I, just, I just give the Lord my ears, my eyes, my brain, uh, my vital organs, and my feet. So where I walk today, Lord, let me bump into the right people at the right time in the right place to make a difference for you. And then don't be surprised when somebody comes up and it may be somebody that you didn't anticipate or wouldn't want to, but God's brought them your way for your reason, for his reason, for you to say something to them. Be bold, be courageous, be loving. Faith works in love, Galatians 5 says. So let this be a season of love, a season of thanksgiving, and a season where God makes a difference in all of our lives. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We are grateful for Jesus and for what he has done for us. Thank you for the great examples in the scriptures, Lord, of people who were willing to leave their home and leave their family to go where you called them to be to do something larger and different that you didn't, they didn't understand at the time, but you were doing something great. You only do great things. So I pray, Lord, to you in this process, you'd give people a sense of peace and you give them a renewed sense of purpose that you've got something for them to do. You spoke to 200 Muslim men last week, Lord. Speak to us today and this week. Speak to us through dreams and visions. Give us fresh awareness of your presence and your power to work through us. It's larger than me, but it's not larger than you. And so we surrender this to you in the mighty name of Jesus.